Hello? Who's there? Mary? Joseph! Yes? Mary's going to have a baby. Pardon? Mary's going to have a baby. How? It is a miracle. Do not question it. No. Okay. She's having a baby. She's having a baby? Do you need me to... No. No. It's not mine? No. Is it anybody I have? No. No. It is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Do you want an argument out of it? No, no, no. She entered her womb on a shaft of light which will be an holy birth. Right, now you continue the drawing, looking at your drawing, but not at the model. I didn't really know much about art until a couple of years ago, when I started to write my film on Van Gogh. I'm fascinated by artists' lives, and particularly how they create, where it all comes from. Creativity has nothing to do with success or failure. These drawings come as gifts. Sometimes I go to this life class, which is quite terrifying, but brilliant, because it teaches me to trust that creativity comes from somewhere other than the head, the heart, I suppose, or spirit. Now, tone seven, brush in the mouth. Well, I've got 500 pounds to spend on a work of art. So what am I going to buy? Let the quest begin. Well, ever since I was a child, I've loved epics. And as a director of the National Theatre of Brent, I've tackled Zulu, Charles of the Light Brigade, Ring Cycle, Greatest Story Ever Told, The Messiah, and so on. So I suppose I'd like a painting that tackles something big and tells a story. Well, the other day, I was in this room in uh, Waterloo rehearsing a film, and I noticed that I was surrounded by scenes from the Exodus who seem to be exactly on the right theme. I, I love the elements, like the mist, the clouds, and the water coming out of that rock there. Terribly exciting, because yeah. at the beginning, I thought, oh, there's abstracts on the wall. And I thought, oh, no, they're not. No, no, there's, oh, there's a figure. Oh, I see. Oh, no, it's... um. Water from a rock. Oh, he's a man, not getting water from the rock. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see, it's about the, um, the Israelites. One of the things I love about the story of the Israelites in the desert is whenever things get really bad, another miracle occurs. And every picture here tells a different miracle. A cloud by day to lead the way, then a pillar of fire takes over at night. Then when they're starving, manna and quail suddenly drop out of nowhere. There they all are, having their little tiny roast quails. If one believes the story, they must have got used to these divine occurrences happening kind of every day. There was this cloud always there, and the Red Sea suddenly goes back yeah. to them. And... It's almost as though the cloud was symbolic of, of God guiding them through the desert. Do, do you believe you are guided? Yes, I do. I mean, I, yes, I do. Uh, I am a Christian, so the story is very relevant to myself as well. In that wh while I was doing the work, I really felt as though I was, I was going on the, the journey myself. And, right. Uh, they go through all these adventures, and they finally reach this promised land, which is wonderful. Joshua then takes over, doesn't Well, it's he? Moses who takes over. Oh, yes, you're right. Yes, you know. Yeah. I've seen Sorry. the Ten Commandments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that's quite a film. It is a wonderful film. Quite a bit of dramatic and... Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I love Ten Commandments. Yeah. Um, I was brought up on that, yeah. I have to admit. And there's a wonderful shot when you get all the children of Israel. It's the kind of... It, all diagonally going up the screen, which you have to see, like, on the huge, hmm. massive screen there in Leicester Square. So but that all the children of Israel are being shot from above, and they're all going up like that, up to the, that diagonal, up to that corner of the screen. And up there is Charlton Heston in his, all his gear, yeah. right yeah. at the corner. And, you, and the, it's brilliant because the, ca 
the eye is led to this one figure. And I get the same feeling from here. We're watching some huge epic quest, some huge story, which is also highly personally relevant, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because we're all on some quest from darkness to light, if you like. Mm. So it's a difficult choice, but for me, I, I would, with my 500 pounds, mm. one of these will definitely go on my list. Now, this I love, but unfortunately it has a little red dot, so that's sold. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that leaves this one, which I think is uh, just very moving and very hopeful, and this little figure going, yeah, we've got there, we're here, we're there, here. That picture is almost like a relief. It is. You know, there's no more desert, That's there's right. actually water. Yes, that will definitely go on the list, the promised land. I'm really very delighted to have met you and to, apparently by chance, found them. But is it by chance? <laughs> When I go to galleries, I'm always drawn, and I don't quite know why, because I'm not a Christian, but I'm very drawn to Western religious stories. I got to know about Stanley Spencer's paintings through my brother, who's passionate about him. Very good. And th these people here, gazing at lots of Stanley's paintings, they're, they're gazing up to something happening in heaven. I love this painting of the resurrection. It seems to me to combine a sense of the dramatic and visionary. He seems to say there is something beyond the everyday, and I really like that. It's nothing to do with sin and judgment, it's just people meeting again and being forgiven. Now, this is Cecil Collins, who I've just discovered. He's a visionary. And I don't know Cecil Collins at all. No, I don't know a lot of Who are they? Are they angels? What are, what are they, then? Do we it's know? the fall of Lucifer, so they are all angels. I think if I was an artist, angels would be a theme. I bring angels into a lot of my shows. Why? Why do you like angels? I don't know. I, don't, I, I like the winged messengers. So what I think I'm looking for is a figurative painting that has a dramatic quality and a spiritual quality. Something beyond the here and now. I've come to see Craigie Aitchison, not because I can afford any of his paintings, which I definitely can't, but because I think they're wonderful. And he's one of the few people who seems to be doing religious subjects. The picture, I hope, clearly tells a story, which is what paintings at the beginning were intended to do. So that's, yeah. uh, that, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. By, at the beginning, you mean like... In when, the, the world, in, when people started painting. In the caves or... Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to record um, the most momentous story that I suppose I'm impressed with or taken in by. Yes. So, you know, that's... It isn't as people would like to think because of all grand religious reasons. Because I don't think I'm that religious to do that. I'm doing it like a reporter would do something. Well, the minute you do religion, people throw stones at you. Not quite so bad nowadays. I mean, they're not saying all this is rubbish. Right. That they would have before. They would say, how dare you do that? So when you paint, for instance, this big, beautiful Christ figure, now, when you started that, did you have his figure as the, the, the opening idea or, or a colour? What, what was the kind of spark? Well, or? With that one, I had the figure in my head. But there, were, there was a lot of alteration here. There was nothing there at first. Right. That head wasn't there, and there was, it didn't work. Once you painted the figure, did you then think green? 
It's it's all to do with the moods you're in at the time, the colour. It's all to do with the, the what? moods. The moods, right. Like, the, I must have just been in the mood to put that green on, like in yes. that yellow one. Yes. Yes. And then another day, the thought of doing that yellow one I, it seems to me un, unbearable. <laughs> is the other head, is that a, a, a kind of guardian? That's kind of angel. Angel, yeah. Now, I love this painting here. When are you going to heaven? Yeah. He was a 15 year old Bedlington. Right, right. How much would this cost me if I was to seek to purchase this? Well, they do it. I'm just looking up the size. You see, they do it by the size. <laughs> they have to, because you can't, until you're dead, you can't. You have to. You couldn't sell a small one for less or more than a big one. Right, but when right. you're dead, they do, it doesn't matter. Um, when you're dead, when you... Well, it was eight by six inches. Right. So, I think it was 4,000. Right. You see, the gallery take 50%. Is there any way I could purchase one of your works for uh, under 500 pounds? Yeah, that's just print now. I think it's here somewhere. So is Wayne, um a relative of these two? No. Just, but the same kind of dog? Yeah. That's it in that colour. Oh, wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Then they did, I think, about 40 in pink. Oh, in pink? So that was your idea? Well, I wanted to try it in pink. Right. They're lovely, aren't they? They're wonderful. This is excellent. I love this. I think it's 250. Oh. In a way, I would like to, I'd like to like the pink one, but I think maybe you'd get tired of that more than that one. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the best. Okay, well, thank you very much. Bye, yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Now, by coincidence, in the same street, in fact, nearly next door to Craigie, there's another artist I want to see, called Jane Langley. <sighs> I've never done this. I've never, ever, in my life, been shown into an artist's workroom. Really? No, ever. This is the first time. It's very exciting. They're usually very private places. Yes. And visitors are... Like invaders. Yes. Let me just take them in a bit. Look at that crucifixion. That's extraordinary. Do you take paint a lot of religious subjects? Um, I think that I want to use the Christian iconography because to me, I can use the stories and bring them into our time. Mm. Uh, it, it seems to have has a, a connection that's mm. important. Um, though this is a crucifixion, I don't mm. see the crucified figure as Christ. I see it more as an innocent fool who's potentially a victim. It's wonderful because he's struggling. I, I, for me, he's st a struggling mm. figure. He's, he's still not, alive. He's still alive and yeah. he's not content. Mm. He's not content with just going out on the cross and saying, OK, mm. fine, mm. it is finished. The figure on the left is deceit. That's why the arm is coming in front of the figure, and there's these two colours, mauve oak and ochres, interreacting, so it makes it very uncomfortable. Oh, the colour makes it uncomfortable? Yeah. Right. And then the red figure, that represents people that might abuse the world and the environment. The black sun that's being tossed up in the air, it could be a dead planet, but it all fits in with the idea of when Christ died, there was an eclipse. There's something kind of comic about these figures, mm. which somehow, to me, stops it being a, 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 a depressing or deeply... Uh, it's something I would look at and look at and look at. I, I love... I can almost understand these people somehow. Well, I like to use um, clowns. Yes, that's right. All the time. I, yes. I don't know why, really. I suppose perhaps from childhood, going yes. to circuses. So I do the fool, and I see humanity sort of fool anyway. This is a change of approach in a way. This is me feeling more positive about the world. What is it? 
Well, it's rather hard to say what it is at the moment because it's only been worked on for three days. So anything can happen. For three days? That's, that's, that's three days? Yes, yeah, so that's like the under underpainting. Three days worth there. I could say what it's about at this stage, yeah, yeah, go on. but What's the meaning about? possibly change. What's it well, about it, now? It's about people being in harmony with nature right. and the environment. That's not an angel, is it, by any chance? No, I'm sorry. Right, just checking. <laughs> um, do, you, do you go, ah, yes, now what, how, how much thought goes into it, or how much just, do you just see where the brush goes, you know, and find, oh, God, yes, this is much more... Well, there's elements of both, mm. actually. Uh, of course, you have to think about what you're doing, and you have to work it out. You have to make drawings and think about the composition. But then there comes a point where actually you have to drop the idea completely mm. and let something else happen, which is almost spontaneous. It's quite subconscious. That's it. Mm. It's the preparedness to lose control. Mm. Yeah. That's, yes. So, um, I have... 500 pounds to spend on... Good. On, <laughs> good. Um, what here um, would you sell for 500 pounds or less, but not more? All Anything? the works on paper. All the works on paper? Yes. The big pictures, when they're finished, will be rather more than that. Right. So what is on... Is this crucifixion on paper? Yes. Is it? Yeah. Is it? And how much is that? £500. Is it? It happens <laughs> to be £500. Oh yes, it's got a little tag on it. Um, good, good. Now, another two artists I'm interested in are Eric Gill and David Jones. They lived in a spiritual community in the 1920s, which was run along very monastic lines. Gill's famous for his sculpture and typography and also for his highly erotic imagery, not to say lifestyle. David Jones was his pupil and did watercolours as well as etchings. Apparently, painting made him so ill he had a nervous breakdown and he had to stop. According to William Desmond, who runs the gallery, these two are very sought after. Well, who's that down there, then? That's Eric Gill. What's that called? Votes for Women. Votes for Women. This is a famous image that was uh, commissioned by Maynard Keynes. How much is that one? Well, that was two thousand five hundred pounds. Um, you want to reduce it to five hundred? Well, it's already sold. Unfortunately. Oh, it's I think it was the first item sold in the exhibition. Was it? Yes. Was it really? Yes. It's excellent. Well, if I was to choose one, I think. How much is this crucifixion? Crucifix. That's four and a half thousand. Yes. But now this actually is the thing I like most here. Well, that's a very beautiful item. That's very what? reasonable. As what? And very reasonable. How much is that then? It's about four hundred and seventy-five pounds. Is it really? Yeah. Four and a half. Well, I have the five hundred pounds to spend. You see, so that would just do that in a twenty-five quid postal order. These are by David Jones. David Jones. David Jones. Yes. I, I love the story of Saint Francis, and I love the story. I know the story of Saint Francis and the Wolf, which is what this is about. Mm -hmm. Of course, the religious ones are the rarest and also the least sought after. The least sort of? Yes, in the sense that they're not as expensive as the later ones. It's beautiful. I love this. I, I think that will be certainly on, on my list. I've come to Dorking to meet Albert Herbert, who turned away from abstract art some time ago to follow his own spiritual path. Were you born a Catholic? Oh, no. I became a Catholic when I was 33, actually. Well, I have a particular obsession with saints and angels. Do you ever paint them at all? Or? Well, I certainly haven't painted angels. I see the idea as a supernatural messenger that might be, in fact, be a projection of something inside yourself. But I can't cope with what they look like. You know, wings. I can't cope with wings. With the idea that they have wings? Or yes. Wing? No, I, I can't think what an angel looks like, you know. I, um, here we are. So this is your, um, this is your studio? Yeah, I'm afraid so. It's rather nice, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's, uh, not. it's great. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's like it's all in the process of being used. I, know, I, this is, uh, I love your, your Jonah. 
Well, they, are, they, are, they just come you, back from the gallery. He's a theme you deal with quite a lot, Jonah. Well, I may have exhausted it now. I did use Jonah on and off for about three years. Yeah, another Jonah. Are you working on this at the moment? Yes. And what is... Well, well again, again, I'm not clear what yeah, it is. Yeah. I like the idea of this... I mean, although I appear to have renounced abstract painting, half the pictures are, have a very abstract intention, like the idea of the top part's green and the bottom part's red. The top part's about something in the open and the bottom part's something enclosed. Well, I think it's going to be Adam and Eve and a bush and a yeah. snake up there. And downstairs, in a, a house, there's supper and emails. I like downstairs. It's a nice yeah. idea. <laughs> well, or it could be a nativity, something oh, right. something in an enclosed, oh, right. something in an enclosed, something sacred in an enclosed space yes. down there. But it just, it's an organic process rather than, yeah. I know, I'm going to do that and that and that and that. Yes, I thought of having the, the apostles at Pentecost, but I, if they did a good to put 12 people in, it gets a bit cluttered. <laughs> it's, um... I have got one, I'm trying, I'm mm. trying to paint, uh, paint the Pentecost here, but it's... Uh, oh, that's, the, oh, that's the, the tongues of flame, is uh, it? The tongues of flame, yeah, but yeah. it's in a very early stage, it's yes. not finished. It's pretty awful like that. It, Don't think it will work, but... Maybe a year's time, I might be able to do something with it. In fact, there's, a, there's some others of that idea somewhere, if I could find them, I don't know. Still. Why do you think you developed an art along fairly largely religious subjects, or...? It is entirely religious. I, entirely? I, I your work is of, entirely religious? I made, uh, since about 1982, I made a decision. I was going, that I was going to, as a discipline, that's the sort of subject I was going to do. It, so it's It's entirely. an escape from the sort of self-expression a lot of modern art's concerned with. Right. I mean, I think most artists like the idea of a discipline. I mean, if I was doing abstract paintings, I might have restricted myself to straight lines or, or a very narrow range of colours. Or I'm doing the same thing with subjects. But I'm interested that you, you are consciously going away from self-expression. Yes. What, yes. what, what is it about self-expression or revealing yourself? I mean, you are revealing yourself through these. I mean, but... W w what I is it about that, that that doesn't appeal to you? I would prefer if it was about something more important than, than me. I'd prefer if people just saw the pictures and read in them whatever they liked. Do you feel that in, in, ever that you're just an agent, as it were? That you're just the... Yeah, it sounds very pretentious well, to say I know, so. but I'm... Yeah, yeah, I see what you... Yes. Reluctantly, yeah. Um, can you tell me what I could afford for that, what painting I, you, you would sell me for £500? Well, it's difficult because I leave these prices to the gallery. Mm. Left to me, I, I, the prices would fluctuate day by day depending on my mood, you know. But it's better for me to leave it to the gallery. I think that some of the ones you've been looking at, they've got it about 650 except that mm. one's about 500 Oh, this um, one? Yeah, I don't... I don't See why I couldn't make them a bit cheaper. Oh, well. As I've, as, I've known you, as I've known you at least 20 minutes. We can, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is five. Is this 500? No, yes, I think, I think James is James, gorgeous. That's an early one of Moses in the Burning Bush. Yeah. There are two bushes. I don't know what I meant by that. Uh -huh. And you notice he's clothed like a Buddhist monk. Yes, I see. A gesture towards <laughs> interfaith dialogue. <laughs> uh, what about uh, that, that little what? bit of wood? Which is the which little bit of wood? This little bit of bit, bit on an old piece of wood there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, that's so nice. Oh, yes. Do you don't sound very keen by your voice, really? No, I'm not that keen on that. No. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? You've got... I mean, it, it, it's not... doesn't... OK. doesn't move me as the others do. Perhaps it's because Adam is in such an inferior Oh, maybe, position. maybe, um, dear, maybe it is that. Woman's painting, really. Eve, Eve is triumphant. Oh, yes. I, 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 funny enough, I... Yes. What about... Well, how about... Why, what's, what's that one? That, that one? Of, how, do you, how do you feel about that one? Either of these Jonas... It's lovely. You've heard that for 500 And that's a wonderful one. I love this picture. The strange, colourful beach that could be flowers, it could be sand, and then this wet sea. And the whale's delivered Joan like he's left him on the shore. And the whale's whoosh, off again. And this goose, is it a goose? Or I don't know. No. Bird. Not very good with birds. The reason the white bird is there is that it's, it's a more contrast. It's a bit of white in a rather, yes. in a rather darkish picture. But it also has these symbolic meanings. But mm. as they're partly unconscious, it's really not possible for me to talk about them.
So, now I've got to choose. The quest is nearly over. Ah, oh, dear me, this is terrible. I have no idea. Just right now, I have no idea. I think they... This... All right. All right. There's, there's two by... Albert Herbert, which I love both of them, but I don't want to, I want to eliminate one. And I think it has to be this one. I have this here because I like the kind of mixture of the, the kind of Buddhist figure and the Old Testament story, which I like. But I think I prefer this one, which is rather marvelous. So I'm going to take this out there. But you're going to go back here. And so we now have Craigie Aitchison, which is his dog going to heaven, which I love, which is, is a print. The Jan Rowe, which is, um, I only have a photograph of, but is the promised land, which was marvelous, again, and full of vision and hope, which is very wonderful. And I was kind of looking for a picture with hope in it. Um, Albert Jonah, which says a lot to me about you have to do certain things in life whether you like it or not particularly if you're kind of in any way creative you're dumped on a bloody beach and you get on with it somehow I like the rail roaring away on these funny figures um, this which I love which is the um, David Jones ah, this, which is the David Jones St Francis and it's very Kind of quite mystic with these strange birds going around his back and he's hugging the wall. Each time I say I start describing the picture, I, that's the one I want. It's terrible. And Jane Lang, this is extraordinary, this picture. I don't know. I love. Mm, mm, mm. They're all quite different. There is. You see, when I got up, I mean, if I was. I got up this morning and I, for some reason, felt rather angry and restless. And, and that's the picture that hits me. Now, if I got up and I was feeling very calm and quite meditative and contemplative, that, you know, it's very difficult to know what, um, it's such a subjective thing. I could go on for hours and hours saying I don't know what to choose. <gasps> All right. <laughs> I have decided this is the one I think. I think Jane Langley's. It's quite different than I expected. I wanted, I thought I wanted to find a painting that was going to be very, like this view or, or kind of figures and, but it's actually so full of passion and it's full of her own feelings about the planet and about the human race and, and that's the one that this morning here and now is the one that grabs me. Mm -hmm.